Hello everyone and welcome back to Fate Grand Order. As a reminder, this video and all videos in this series after this will have been recorded in advance. So, last time we found out the Enmite is in deep, deep debt from what was likely a scam. I, I really believe it's a scam. <sighs> so, let's keep going. Oh, are you the only one here? I see, so Mesh and Kiyohime are out cleaning the hot springs. You certainly are all hard workers. <laughs> here, Cursor, why don't you have a seat and take a break? I'll make some tea before the others get back. I didn't even realize how big the inn has become, although it used to be even bigger a long time ago. I'm not just saying that, either. It was really beautiful back when we still had the crane room. There was an amazing weaver back then named Oyu. She ended up checking out by flying out of her room after she said the moonlight was calling her. She even left all her belongings behind. <sighs> I still don't know what the story was there. Maybe the sparrow spied on her while she was working? Here you go, the tea's ready. I threw in some Monaco wafers, filled with sweet beans from my secret, secret stash, too. Thank you. <laughs> what a peaceful afternoon. I wish these kinds of days could go on forever. Eh, I'm sorry, that was very insensitive of me. Just because things are peaceful here doesn't mean your world isn't still in a lot of trouble. <sighs> Once again, my apologies. I've never been good at gauging how other people feel. It's okay. I mess up all the time, too. Really? <laughs> oh, sorry. I shouldn't be happy about that. But I can tell you're being considerate. We all come from different worlds, each with their own set of values. You have yours. Mash has hers. Tamamo and the others have theirs. It may seem like there's only one world, but it's actually divided into many different sections. What humans call hell is just another one of them. <laughs> the thoughts, values, and ethics of each society are what shapes that society's afterlife. For example, hell in your country and hell in Mr. Finn's country are very different things. Humans have wanted to cope with the inevitability of death ever since they came into being. That particular law- the particular laws and customs may differ between tribes and cultures, but the idea that when they die, bad people are punished and good people find salvation has always been a constant in each and every country you could find. <laughs> of course, these were always things taught to keep society running smoother for the living, not to describe what hell was actually like. To encourage people to live good, clean lives by promising they would find happiness after death. It all stemmed from obvious morals, the kind that anyone could agree were right and proper. It isn't usually Hell's business to meddle with human society or, de or to determine what was right and wrong. But our Hell is sensitive to trends, so we tend to incorporate a lot of human religious values. They say Hell, hell and Earth used to be connected that you could conceivably walk between them. That sounds rather inefficient as a land of death to me, though. <laughs> anyway, since mankind couldn't conquer death, they began to change how they thought about it. Once death was no longer something special that was to be feared, hell changed too. Or, put another way, that was when it became an unpopular fantasy. Humans no longer feared hell, nor thought they even required one, and the idea of seeking salvation in hell was lost. The hell I grew up in was a hell that had long since fallen behind the times. 
I trained in Hell, became certified as a Tormentor Demon, and was eventually entrusted with the Enmite as Great King Enma's proxy. It's the greatest honor anyone could hope for, right? So I tried to do the best I could. <laughs> sure, I may have gotten myself captured the one time I went to visit a human village. But now I'm in charge of the entire Enmite and doing a great job of it. <laughs> well, no, I guess that isn't quite true. In reality, the Enmite was supposed to be shut down a long time ago. Humans stopped wandering in here. The Shinto gods no longer come to stay. Really, once the world at large modernized, the hells in this inn had outlived their purpose. That doesn't change the fact that the Enmite is a great place. You're very kind, but it's okay. Nobody would miss it if it disappeared. The only issue we have now is making sure none of you are stuck with divine punishment, and the way things are going, I don't think that'll be a problem. So this will officially be the last year that the Enmite is open for business. The Great King Enma even said I could come back home whenever I like. <laughs> but you don't really want it to shut down, do you? I... Why have you been keeping the Enmite going all this time? Yeah, so... I imagine we're about to get a closer look at her backstory. <sighs> I will have put a warning up at the beginning of the video. I'll put timestamps in the description. And I'm also gonna say right here. Like, this is probably where it's about to start. <sighs> well... Yeah. A long time ago, though not so long as you might think, a young girl fled into the mountains to escape the brothel she was being kept in. She ran so desperately that she hardly noticed she entered a beautiful mansion hidden amidst the mists. I don't know if I'm actually supposed to be reading this in her voice or not, but... What she saw there were things that had always been close at hand, yet tantalizingly out of her reach. Warm blankets, plentiful food, a world without any adults to berate her. She did wonder why the mansion was there all alone. Why there was not a single person to be found. But she smiled when she saw that at least the mansion had friends in the sparrows that fluttered about its yard. The girl drifted between the mansion's many guest rooms, holding her breath as if she were afraid she might wake up and find it had all been a dream. She then put her hands together in prayer to give thanks to the Buddha. Thank you for giving me a roof over my head before I die. Thank you for showing me something beautiful before the end. The girl then drew her last breath, a tear running down her cheeks at the mansion's beauty. She hadn't eaten in days. Her body was bruised and beaten. She had been so hungry it was a wonder she had managed to stay on her feet, her feet at all. Yet even so, she did not partake in the feast laid out before her, as during her life in captivity. Her tongue had been torn out, and her throat crushed beyond repair. When the girl woke, she found herself at the Sanzu River in Children's Limbo, one of the entrances to Hell. Whether the Buddha had taken pity on her, or because she hadn't eaten anything at the mansion, the girl had been reborn as a Sparrow Oni in Ancient Hell, rather than joining the other dead. The sparrow was named Benny, or Red, after the color of her hair, and set about working at the Sanzu. After countless years of hard work, the Supreme Judge of Hell, the Great King Enma, recognized her accomplishments. He appointed her his proxy, and entrusted her with caring for the Mayoiga in the world of the living. The Mayoiga is where your old form drew its last breath. The sparrows in its yard say they would be happy to follow your commands. The sparrow went on to make the mansion flourish, just as the great King Enma had said. 
However, I want to go down the mountain. I want to see how people live now. Even as an Oni, the Sparrow still missed human companionship, so she visited the nearby village. Will wonders never cease? A sparrow as red as fire. It even cries like a person when you smack it. The sparrow was so surprised she forgot she was an Oni now and found herself huddling up in fright. Come to think of it, it felt as though this sort of thing had happened to her many times before. Well now, that is something. I say, neighbor, would you be willing to let me have that sparrow for myself? It was an old man known for being an oddball who put a lot of time and effort into impractical endeavors. As a result, the rest of the village usually kept their distance from him. This latest endeavor suited his penchant for impracticality quite well. He convinced the old woman to make a trade, the crying sparrow for all of his life savings. Why did you save me? I thought humans never do anything unless it benefits them. I'm not sure either, but hey, you can't see someone unhappy and not try to help, right? After treating the sparrow's wounds, the old man naturally returned her to the mountain. Try not to get caught next time, he said with a laugh. Time passed, and one day, the sparrow learned that the old man had fallen on hard times. With no money to pay his taxes and no neighbors willing to help him, he was slowly starving to death. Welcome, honored guest. Welcome to the Enmite, a land open to all who are pure of heart. After the old man had gone off to the mountain to die, the sparrow invited him into the Mayoiga. The old man gratefully accepted the sparrow's invitation and enjoyed his time there immensely. But not as much as the sparrow did. As happy as the old man was, it didn't compare to the joy the sparrow had when he had saved her long ago. The sparrow would have been happy to attend to the old man forever, but one day, he said he was returning to his old village. For your selflessness in saving that lone sparrow, I present you with a, wh with a wicker basket. In accordance with the Mayuiga's rules, the sparrow had prepared two wicker baskets. A large one and a small one. The old man tried to refuse, arguing he had already been given more than enough, but the sparrow threatened to keep him here forever until, unless he accepted them. So the old, old man humbly chose the small basket and returned to his own world. From then on, the basket would fill with a modest amount of happiness each and every day, and the old man went on to live happily ever after. Except... That's not true. Yes, this all really happened, but its message is off. After the old man returned from the inn, he became the talk of the village. That old man disappeared years ago, and now he comes back without having aged a day. Not only that, he looks better off than ever. I should ask him what happened. The villagers crowded inside the old man's house, half out of curiosity and half out of jealousy. Oh, it's all thanks to the great protector of children. The Mountain Jizo. He said he'd give me some happiness as long as I promised to live an honest life from now on. The old man wisely decided to avoid mentioning the sparrow, but otherwise told them all about the fun and surprising things that had happened in the inn, turning them into larger-than-life folk tales that could be applied as lessons in their own lives. The villagers' eyes sparkled at hearing these stories. Most of them looked on the old man with envy. Some of them searched high and low for the inn the old man had wandered into. Some prayed that things they had lost would find their way back to them. Some tried to live upstanding lives, and others worked to be true to themselves. Sometimes they would lose their footing on their chosen path. Sometimes their eyes would well up with tears of pure envy. Most of them had dreams of one sort or another that kept them going in their small, selfish, aimless days. Those who had strayed from the path went unrewarded. However, many found their dreams came true. And why wouldn't they, given that the old man was using every bit of happiness from his basket to ensure their dreams would be realized? 
The village flourished, and its residents became rich. Those who feuded in poverty became friends in plenty. It became a truly welcoming world where anyone and everyone was happy. All except for one person. The old man who was always ostracized in his strangeness. This isn't right. It doesn't make sense. Why don't you tell all of them that the only reason they're all happy now is because of you? No matter how rich the village became, the old man's life never changed. One day, the sparrow chirped to the old man as he sat at his hearth, where the only bright light to be found came from the moon. Who'd want to hear that your happiness is all thanks to someone else? That would only make them feel bad. As long as things are well, nothing else matters. Saying something now wouldn't make anyone happy. <laughs> That's not why! They're only happy now because you refuse to say anything! And all the while, you're the only one who isn't happy when you deserve it the most! The old man had used his treasure for everyone besides himself. He kept on lying in the hope that doing good deeds would lead to his own happiness. So many made-up tales. So many tall tales. So many fairy tales. The old man alone remained behind in reality, all so that he could make his many fun lies become true. Looking back, the old man probably knew that very soon the blessed lives of, that the others that the other villagers had led would soon come to an end, and that he was alone, regarded as nothing more than an eccentric with a propensity for tall tales. The old man remained so until his death. But when he died, he did so with an expression of pure joy. Although nobody was with him when he passed, his funeral procession was as lively as anything, since it was attended by almost all the villagers who had heard of his passing. In fact, there were attendees from the neighboring villages, and their neighbors' neighbors as well. Even though none of them had caught on to the old man's well-intentioned lies, his made-up stories had still been a source of strength so they had come to offer a smile in return. Each and every last person there was grateful to the old man. Can you imagine a happier way to go? In the end, not one person was left unhappy, just as the old man had wanted. It was the best possible death he could ask for. There was no reason for anyone to be sad. And yet... I still find it sad. So very, very sad. No one else made the old man happy. Not one other person ever paid him back when he should have gotten what he should have gotten for his smile. Every lie he told, every story he came up with was all to help others, never himself. In the end, he died without so much as a name after seeing so many other people go on to live happy lives. I never should have invited a human to the Sparrow Inn. All I did for him was make him unhappy. So, that's why. That's why I want to properly return the favor. The Enmite is a world unto itself that connects to both the past and the future. So as long as I keep it going, as long as it remains a mythical place where spirits wander, I might get to see him again someday. Nobody else may care if the enmity sticks around or not. But I still want to see him again. I want to see his gentle smile again. I want to hear his funny stories again. I want to impress him with how much I've improved as a cook. I'm sorry you had to see that. No doubt strange to see an Oni crying out of nowhere, huh? Thank you for taking such good care of the Enmite. I may have said I was going to close it this year, but I still- but I haven't gotten that desperate yet. As the phrase goes, heaven only knows. We sparrows will do the best we can with what we have. I know we had no way of knowing her story before she told us. 
But now that we do, I can tell that the Anmate holds a very special place in Benny Enma's heart. Come on, we have to make sure we get all five treasures and give them back to the bamboo cutter. <sighs> Poor Benny Hanma. Alright, what's available over here? Wow. Um, let's see, how much can I do right off the bat? This one... one first then. Let's go for this one. lumber for the rest of them. Let's see how I'm doing as far as tribute points goes. Mm. I can't read that. This far away, hold on. Um. Oh. So close to be being able to unlock section 12 tomorrow morning. Which one's the next? Oh, this one would be the next story to check. After... question mark?
Oh no, wait. Huh? But wasn't it just section 10 that I just read? Huh? I'm confused. It's section 10 that I just read. Is this section 11 then? I th we'll see. I guess. You know, I'm not actually sure what Sansang is supposed to sound like off the top of my head. Um, I'm also not sure what she's saying here. Beyond dumb? Oh, cursor! Perfect timing! You'll never believe this! This amusement center is, abs is the absolute worst. First place was all mine going into 4th South Hanchan. But at the very end, the other three players all hit me with the last discard of the game! Triple run! Game over! You're supposed to abort the round on a Sanchaho, right? Not here, apparently! Dumb house rules. Okay, so she's talking about Mahjong, I think. And don't even get me started on that monkey mask guy trying to confuse me with all his chatter. I'm sorry, Sanzang, but could you... Please try to calm down. I can tell you're afraid you're talking about some sort of game, but I'm afraid I can't tell what game it is. Ah, you've never tried Mahjong before, Mash? Why don't you, me, and Cursor all play together then? Miss Monk, gambling is strictly prohibited here. Playing for fun is perfectly fine, so try to keep it that way, okay? Unless you've come to enjoy losing somehow. Or maybe for you monks, being taken for all your worth makes you more worthy or something of the sort. I, I have to admit, that was pretty good. It's true, I don't have a single yawn to my name anymore, but... Hmm? Hmm? Is it just me, fox lady, or do you have some beyond crazy karma? I don't think you could atone for it in all... For it all in two lifetimes, let alone one. Oh, it's just you. I'm sure I simply happen to resemble whoever you may be thinking of. Mere coincidence, nothing more. But never mind that. This may sound rather southern, Miss Monk, but we were wondering something. You don't happen to have one of the Buddha stone begging bowls? I do, actually. Why? Do you want to see it? That's it! The Buddha Stone Begging Bowl! This is perfect! You don't know how much we were hoping you might have this, Sanzang. Wow, this is going better than I thought! You are all looking for this bowl? Well, I sure don't need it anymore, so if you want to take it off my hands, that's more than fine with me. Oh, then again, maybe it's not the best idea to sell this. It did originally belong to the Buddha. Please, you'd be doing us a huge favor. 
I can understand why you'd be reluctant to sell something so valuable, but we have a but we have very strong reasons for needing it. Come on, what do you say? I'm willing to accept any divine punishment that may come our way as a result. That isn't really what I'm concerned about, but... Alright, I've got it. Fight me for it. Huh? You mean in Mahjong? No, no, nothing like that. There are conditions that have to be met to hand something like this over. Okay, Cursor, here I come. I hope for your sake you have a servant that can handle my Buddha palm. Yeah, this shouldn't be too hard. Oh, crap. I forgot she was one of the ones with the big, big battery. Although, that's still bigger than it should be. Oh. <sighs> yeah, let's do that just to be safe. Kentoki really makes a joke out of any cast or boss. Okay. Piece of cake. It's so cool, Jayo. Good job. If you can put up that much fight, I doubt you'll be crushed by taking the bowl. Okay then, here you go. One stone begging bowl used by the Buddha himself. What do you mean crushed by it? Don't worry about the money. You obviously need it for a reason, so I'm happy to let you have it. Th thank you, Sansan. But are you sure it's okay to just give it to us like this? Oh yeah, it's no problem. I'm sure the Buddha would be happy that it's being put to good use. Besides, he'd literally be taking a huge weight off my shoulders. In fact, that's exactly why I was hesitant to give it to you. 
that's the Buddha's bowl, so it's a lot heavier than it looks. And it was originally a lot bigger, too. So big that the entire Enmate could fit inside it with room to spare. So I was afraid that it might end up squishing you if I gave it to you, Cursor. But you all handled my Buddha palm without a problem, right? So I'm sure you'll be fine. It's all yours. Oh, but make sure you only use it outside, in case it expands to its original size. <sighs> Thanks, Sansong. Yes! The Buddha knows and sees all. Alright, so getting a treasure from Sanzong was easy, but I wasn't really expecting to have any trouble with her. The rest I am concerned about. <laughs> uh, oh wow, this video really hasn't been going on very long yet, has it? Okay, in that case, let's do one of these. Huh. Concerning. I come bearing good news, Cursor. One of the treasures we need is a tree branch with jeweled fruit from Horai Island, yes? Ah, so we're getting it from Yumei Ren, huh? Well, it would seem that a servant in possession of one such branch just made a reservation. Then we just need to convince them to let us have it! True. However, the servant is very much at odds with Chaldea. In fact, she may currently be your fiercest opponent. As such, any straightforward attempts to win her over are guaranteed to fail. So why not let me handle this one? Oh ho, I'm surprised to hear you volunteer, given how you've been dedicating to help- dedicated to helping from the sidelines. Very well then, go ahead and give it a shot. We'll stay out of sight and keep an eye on things. Fine by me. Then let's go take care of it, shall we? This is the newly expanded beauty parlor. I wonder who the servant with the jeweled branch could be. Shh! Someone's here! <sighs> what a pleasant surprise to see the Enmate is still running. How is the madam doing these days, Henjo? She's been a little glum lately, but she's still alive and kicking. <laughs> Let me take your coat for you. <laughs> Will you be doing your usual course today, Mei Mei? Oh my god. Yes, that sounds good. I'm especially partial to the bed in the far back. The shade there is just right. I must say, though, I'm surprised I haven't heard a peep about this place for the last 300 years. I thought you had finally closed up shop. I'm impressed you've managed to keep this place going among the wretched humans in their society. It reminds me of the Peach Blossom Spring. In one sense, it's like you don't know when to give up. <laughs> Though, I suppose I'm not one to talk. Oh, don't feel like you need to go easy on me. I absolutely love the Enmite's massages. My body may be immortal and unaging, but it still gets stiff. If anything, the fact that it is so durable only makes it worse. The more time passes, the stiffer my body grows, and there is no getting rid of it. Cursed humans. If they only knew the <laughs> if they only knew the pain of immortality, they would never claim jealousy. Ah, yes, that's the spot. Go on, put your back into it. Ah, how I miss this. This is truly what it means to be rejuvenated. Although, not even the Enma can relieve my tension completely. I wonder if there's an even stronger masseuse anywhere. <laughs> Oh, hello. I'm surprised to see such a lofty being here. 
From the look of you, I would guess you're a retired elemental. <gasps> Insolent fool! How dare a mere heroic spirit barge in on my anti-aging ritual! <laughs> Stand right there. Or don't. You will never escape my wrath, no matter what you- Huh? Are you related to the fairies? I sense an ancient wind protecting you, though only just. Ah, uh, yes, that must from be that must be from my beloved wife. My name is Finn McCool. Believe it or not, I was the captain of a band of knights during that cycle. I heard your concerns about your body's stiffness. If you like, I would be happy to relieve you of them. Oh, very well. I will at least hear what you. Ha I will at least typo. <laughs> hear what you have to say. My wife suffered from the same sort of ailment, you see. She would always complain about stiffness whenever she visited the human world. I searched far and wide for a way to help, eventually finding the very best masseuse in the entire world. His hands relieve tension, improve circulation, and make you feel like a and make you feel like new, whether human or fairy. It must be fate that brought us together here. What do you say? Shall I introduce you to him? Huh. <laughs> So in the end, you are merely trying to ingratiate yourself with me. Very well, I will play along with your little ploy. If nothing else, this should be an amusing diversion to help pass my endless time. Go ahead and call for this expert masseuse of yours. If he should actually rid me of my stiffness, I will give you anything you ask for. <laughs> I'm glad to reach an understanding so quickly. The stiffness must truly be a great source of stress for you. All right, then. You're up, Mr. Masseuse. On it. <laughs> yeah, you? Hold it. There's no way this guy is just a masseuse. If anything, he's a monster in masseuse's clothing. <laughs> Easy there, sage woman. It seems you may know who I am, but I've never met you before. I've been staying at this inn for the last few days. Madame Benny's offered nothing but the best hospitality. I'm only here now because she asked if I would be willing to help an old friend of hers. If I were you, I would be glad to have a friend like that looking out for me. All the more so given how long you two will continue to be friends. You did this for me, Emma? I do appreciate that. But why did it have to be this guy? But wait, please, I know how powerful your Nagong is. <sighs> You'll squeeze my intestines right out from my mouth. Stop, step away from me. I'm sorry, Mei Mei. You need to bear with this no matter how much it hurts. <laughs> we can't stop the expert course once it's begun. Trust me, we're doing this for your own good. <laughs> Angel! Now then, let's begin. Try not to struggle, no matter how much it hurts. <laughs> this is so much. <laughs> まかされた。
が八極に二の打ちいらず思考を分けつおまけしねえ Ah,、oh, wait, crap. Why didn't I put the bait up? <sighs> Whatever. I've never felt such pain and humiliation. No one but Lord Zhang Yu has ever made me cry out like this. But you do feel better now, don't you? I still haven't gotten to your right shoulder. If you like, I can massage that as well for an additional charge. <laughs> Do it! This is a good opportunity. If I'm going to fight an as a cursed servant myself from now on, I need to be tension free from head to toe. Do that, and you may have any treasure I possess. <laughs> There you have it a new treasure won, and without any trouble. Even if that may only be to, due to our good fortune in having such a capable masseuse on hand. <laughs> if it were a vicious creature we faced, I would have won the treasure in combat, but of course, this beautiful woman was nothing of the sort. At any rate, I am glad that this matter was resolved without bloodshed or hard feelings. Here, Master, why don't you hold on to this? It will be safer with you. My stunning good looks inevitably draw attention from admirers and enemies alike, after all.、Ugh. There's no telling what sort of mishaps may occur if I keep it with me. Now we have the jeweled branch! That's two out of five! Okay, then. I could do one more. So, this one seems to be against the Liz's. So, hmm, how do I want to do this? I should get. An archer. And then. The setup will work, I guess. The background music's probably not gonna get caught in the video, but the background music changed. <laughs> huh? Asking who this is via eye contact? Huh? Wondering who this is via eye contact? <laughs> Mash, you saw her! <laughs> It's Elisa J of the metal band Great Oni Vermilion Dragon! <laughs> no way! 
Hey! <laughs> What's the Great Elizabeth doing here? I can't believe it! The biggest super idol in the whole Oni world right here in our party room! <laughs> Does this mean we'll get to hear her metal monster voice live? <laughs> With face so strong it'll kill you again! She must have heard our prayers, read stress complaints, and come to save us! Elizabeth, destroy our boring daily lives! <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, bird brains, before I destroy you all! Thanks for your support. I'll make sure to roast you all up nice and juicy tonight. Wow, I've never been greeted this enthusiastically before. I guess all those videos I uploaded paid off. Never mind that they're all sparrows sitting on cushions. <laughs> oh, you're so cool! And your new dress is wicked! Who would have known heavy metal and kimono went so well together? Y you really think so? I mean, I know I thought I had a real shot of topping the UK charts with this get up. But hey, of course I do! This dress is made from genuine salamander skin, after all. Let me say that one more time. This dress is made entirely out of fire salamander skin. Really? Then, in other words, the whole thing is phantasmal leather with a fire alignment. Right, let's do this thing, cold-blooded. For my opening number, I'll be singing one of Japan's best tragic love songs, Painful Princess, The Stalking Dragon. All right, time to dish this place up, New Year's style. Yay! Bring us all up! I'm sure. Oh boy. Ah, Elizabeth's sonic breath is spending, sending the sparrows helter skelter. <laughs> this is the best. It feels like flying inside a storm. They're bouncing around like rubber balls, but they seem to be enjoying it. Ah, yeah, this rocks. I knew I had fans on Earth who could keep up with my singing. Let's keep this ball rolling. Here's the techno version of Love, Red Nerds, and Cherry Pies. The walls into Tommy are coming apart, and I don't even care. I can die happy now. Master, I feel bad interrupting in spar the sparrows and Elizabeth when they're clearly enjoying themselves so much, but... <laughs> Indeed, we can't have them literally bringing the house down. Go on, Cursor, put a stop to this. Hold it. I'm not holding anything. <laughs> They're all vocals? Who's doing the actual, like, playing of music then?
Uh, let's see if we can get one of them down at least. Okay. Nice. There we go. Excellent. Perfect. そびは終わり。どうしがたいの。天と地の狭間にて人を隠ある別所。ここに新たなる祈りを敷く。zoning out here. Sorry. Sorry for the lack of any commentary. I've been recording for a couple hours now.遊びは終わり。眩しいですよ。はい、では。天と地の狭間にて人を隠ある別所。ここに新たなる祈りを敷く。John, let me get your MP up again. Hit her a little bit. Oh, come on.
Oh, come on. Summer Jean will always be so funny to me. Okay, there we go. Hey, what's the big idea? Can't you see I'm performing a show here? Besides, aren't you the ones who asked me to liven up the new event hall? A and we are sorry about that. But if you keep performing like this, we'll need to build the hall all over again. See? Even a security guard has come to stop you. <laughs> it's a beautiful song, but I'm afraid your Ellie power is a bit intense for this room. Right, so we would you mind changing venues to the outdoor stage? That would let all of us enjoy your show, so... You have an outdoor stage, too? Why didn't you say so? Oh, that must have been the place with all the fog. Well, that's fine, but fine with me. It might be a little cold outside, but I'll have you all fired up in no time. See you later then, puppy. Happy 2021! <clears throat> Much better. I must say, that girl certainly is spirited, isn't she? Hmm? What's that on the ground? Ah, I see. This must have come off her outfit. W well, in folklore, salamanders love fire, right? I see no difference between a fire-loving salamander and a fire rat. So let's just say this is from a fire rat robe. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> We got a piece of fire rat robe, I guess. Okay, so that's going to be the end of this video. I need to do some more grinding so I can do some more of these and open up some more stuff to do. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see you all next time. Or no, wait, I need to give the ending spiel. I always forget. <sighs> if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't yet. Um, if you enjoy my content, your friends probably will too, so please, please tell them about my channel. It would help so much. Um, my coffee link is in the description if you want to leave a tip. No obligation, but it is super appreciated. And that's it. So I'll see you all next time. <laughs>